Hi everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to provide a basic tutorial for using Wireshark, which is an open source network scanner and monitor that allows you to take a look at all of the traffic and even individual packets that are passing through the particular network interface card that you're looking at. So I'm going to be showing you on a Mac computer, but this runs through X11, so the user interface should look the same whether you're using Wireshark on Mac, Windows, or Linux. So here I am, I have Wireshark installed and opened up on my computer. And I'm just going to go through some basic things here to get us familiar with the user interface. And then we'll start to take a look at some ways that we can look at how people might be trying to hack on our network or are scanning our network, stuff like that. So first off, uh, when you open up Wireshark, the whole goal of Wireshark is to see what's going on on your network. So let's take a look at what's going on right now. The first thing that we need to do is tell Wireshark which interface, which network interface that we'd like it to listen to. So over here on the left, we have all of our options. We have our interfaces listed down here. Uh, but one way to find out which interface you want to listen to, if you don't already know, is to click on interface list. And it's going to pop up uh, with a number of different interfaces that you have. And you'll notice that one of mine is actually sending and receiving packets. So that's probably the one that I want to listen to. And in fact, it is. It's my uh, wireless network interface on my computer here. So to listen to this interface, I just have the checkbox checked. And I'm just going to click on Start. You'll notice that a new window opens up. And I start to see all of the traffic that's currently happening on my network. So at any time, it's going to continue listening and you can eventually get too much data here in Wireshark. So once you think you have enough information listed and you want to take a closer look, you can just hit this red stop button up here and it will stop listening to this particular interface. So as you can see the information that we see, uh, we can see the, the time that the uh, packet was received or sent and we can change how we view time up here in view. And then we can go to time display format and you can see that you have a number of different options. You can see uh, by default it's seconds since the beginning of capture, uh, but a, a helpful one is also to use seconds since the previous captured packet, and you have a number of different options here. So that's how you can change that. You can change a number of things here in the view menu. I'm not going to go through all of this in the video. I think uh, you all can take a look at this menu and see what you want to enable and disable, but uh, it's nice to know that it's there for us. But we can see the time, we can see the source, either IP address or MAC address, we can see the destination IP or MAC, we can see which protocol uh, was being used, uh, the length of the actual packet, and then some info, which is probably uh, one of the more important pieces of data that we're going to look at here. So we can see there's a number of different things going on on my network right now. And if we want to take a look at a packet a little more in depth, uh, so let's say we want to just take a look at here's a request that was sent uh, from me to a particular IP address. Uh, it was an acknowledgement. And when I click on it, you'll notice that a lot of other information is displayed below. So we can see the frame information, the Ethernet information, IP information, TCP information. Uh, and if there were more, there was more information such as like HTTP information that would be displayed here below. And we're going to look at some HTTP packets in a few minutes. Uh, but notice that, say we drop down this internet protocol section, uh, we can see uh, some information here. We can see the source IPs here, the destined IP is down here. Uh, but in the TCP layer, we're going to have a little bit more information since this was a TCP uh, request. We can see the source port in the destination port. So obviously port uh, 550040 is a temporary port on my computer. So this was probably a communication between uh, my computer or at least something on my network interface card and a website. You can see uh, you know, the header length, uh, some other information down here as well. Now let's go ahead and let's take a look at an HTTP packet in a list here. But in order to do that, we have to go to a website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start capturing again by clicking on this green shark button. And I'm going to start a new capture. So I'm going to continue without saving this current capture. And now what I'm going to do, it's probably going to start uh, getting some information there, but I'm just going to go to a website. I'm going to go to my website, ansonalex.com, let that load up here. And then I'm going to go back and take a look at some HTTP requests. So I'm going to minimize this. We're back here in Wireshark. Uh, I'm going to stop the capture so we don't keep bringing in more information. And I can see there's some HTTP requests right here. Uh, but in order to make this a little bit easier, because you can see how much 
information is in here. We're looking at all of the packet packets across our network. What we can do is we can use uh, the filter up here at the top. And there's a couple of ways we can do this. First of all, I can just click in the filter area and type um, a certain uh, protocol that I'm looking for. Uh, there's a number of different things you can type in filter. You notice it's red right now. When I enter a protocol that it knows is valid, it turns green and I can hit enter. And you'll notice that now I just have a list of HTTP packets. So this is where uh, I can see, and I happen to know that this is uh, part of my website, probably some things I need to fix here, uh, but I can see all the requests to and from my website. So I can see the source right here. I'm gonna click on this one. Uh, this is my MAC address, and the destination is obviously the MAC address of my web server. But when I scroll down here and I look at the additional information, you'll notice that I now have an HTTP section down here at the bottom, and I can scroll down, and I can see that, hey, the host is AnsonAlex.com and uh, that's obviously correct, that's the website I went to. I can see which machine I was accessing this website from. So uh, I was on a Macintosh and I'm using Google Chrome. So we've got that all in there. Uh, so that's how you can look at some HTTP information here. Now I mentioned there's a few different ways to use this filter. So for example, if we wanted to look at all of the packets that are coming from this source right here, this source IP address, I can right click on this packet and I could go down to apply as filter and I could say and selected. So we'll look at uh, the filter we already have in there which is HTTP and this selected source IP address. When I do that, you'll notice that now we still have HTTP up here but we've also entered the source IP. So now we're all able to see all of the HTTP uh, messages that were sent from my computer to my website because I filtered by the IP address of my computer up here. Uh, so we can see all the messages that were sent. Uh, alternatively, we could have uh, gotten rid of the computer. We're going to go back to HTTP and I could have clicked on source 2400 starting at least with that MAC address and I could have applied that as a filter with the selected. Now we're looking at all the messages that were sent from the web server to my computer. So we can see there's a lot of text and CSS files. Uh, obviously, we can click on the particular packet and take a look down here uh, in the HTTP section to find some more information. You can see I use a Cloudflare server there. Uh, so there's uh, some great information in here as well. We can even look at the media type because this was an image. So that's down here as well. We can see the size of it. One thing that I do want to mention, I only went to one website, so this is pretty simple. But if you have a browser open and you have a number of websites open in your browser, there might be some asynchronous talk going on between that web server and your client computer. So when you run a capture here on Wireshark, you might get a bunch of gobbledygook. So it's a good idea if you're troubleshooting a specific problem to close all of the other websites that you have open so that you can sift through the data a little bit easier. So now we've taken a look at how we can capture some traffic on our network and how we can uh, take a look at, at some of that traffic and drill down a little bit. I'm going to go back and I'm going to unfilter this here uh, because one thing I want to show you now is uh, one way that you could possibly find out uh, if there's some malicious activity going on on your network interface card and how you could maybe stop that. So I'm going to uh, take a look at, you'll notice that uh, here's an acknowledgement. I'm going to see if I can find a reset. So I'm just going to scroll down here. And actually you know what I'll do is I'm going to run a new capture. So there's too much information in this one. And we'll see if we can find what we're looking for here. It looks like I'm not getting any dropped packets. So that's a good thing. That's okay. We can still look at what I want to show here. Uh, basically, if we take a look at one of these packets, and we'll take a look at uh, really any of these should be okay. We don't want to look at a one that's being sent to myself. So this is good. So we've got a message that's being sent from my computer to someplace else. If we take a look down here into the TCP section, we can see the source port and the destination port, which I talked about earlier. Now, this message was sent from my computer. Uh, so it wasn't accessing my 443 port. But let's say I have a packet that I'm seeing coming from a weird IP address or a MAC address, and uh, it's, it's trying to talk to my computer, and then my computer keeps dropping it. You'll see an RST message over here in the info section, which means my network is basically saying, stop talking to me. And you'll see that over and over again. And uh, 
First of all, if that request is going to multiple ports on your computer, then they're probably doing a network scan to find out any ports that are listening, uh, any ports that are open within your network. Now at the same time, if you see some data then go out from the particular port that they sent a message to, uh, from your computer to whoever this is or whatever computer this is, what you can do is you can actually take a look at the port that it came out of and you can try and find the application or the process that was sending that message. So let's say we had a weird IP address requesting information from us and then we sent it from our port 443 here on our computer. What I could do is I can't do this within Wireshark but I can do this on uh, Windows, Linux and Mac. I'm going to show you on Mac. I can actually see what's going on on that port on my computer and find the different process IDs and I can go and kill those processes. So for example I'm going to open up terminal here on Mac. Should be This would be command prompt on Windows. And I'm going to enter the command to see what's going on on the different ports on my computer. I'm going to type sudo ls0f space dash i and then I'm going to look at port 443 I'm going to enter my password and so I can see there's a number of different things going on uh, on my port 443 it's a pretty well used port I can see spotlight is going is using this port calendar um, Google is using it as well. So what I could do is uh, you'll notice that there is a section for the PID. That's the process ID. Uh, so let's say here's the process that I think is causing my computer to send out information that I don't want it to send. It's process 221. So then I can open up Activity Monitor here on Mac and I have all my processes. I could sort by the process ID. I could find process 221. Here it is, Google Chrome. And then I could kill it. So that's a, a real quick way uh, to find out which, using Wireshark, find out which port your computer is sending information from that you don't necessarily want it to send information from. Then using that port number, find, find what process is sending information from that port, and then you can then kill that process. So that's just one useful way to use Wireshark. I'm obviously using this on a client computer uh, with just my network interface card. It, this computer is the only thing that's using that network interface card. But if you had a, a server uh, or a router that you can run Wireshark on, you could then see all of the traffic that's going on within your internal network. So at a small, medium-sized business, uh, maybe somebody's having an issue with something. Maybe you think you might be getting a, a DDoS attack. You'll you'll be able to see that. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're getting a an attack, especially a DDoS attack, you're going to see. I don't have any in this list here to show you, but you're going to see a lot of the RST packages where your network is sending a message back saying I want to stop talking to you, I don't want to talk to you, and then that uh, outside server continues to send packets into your server. That is a, a DDoS. You can get uh, at least the destination IP, maybe the destination MAC, do what you need to do with that, but Wireshark is the tool that allows you to gather that information. There's a number of different filters and you can change certain things here in Wireshark. So if I go to view, I could change the coloring rules. So by default, this is where you'll see the default coloring rules that are used for, for Wireshark, but you could change these if you'd like as well. So that's a very useful feature. Uh, you can export data here within Wireshark just by going up to the file menu and you have all of these export options. So you can export specific packets, packet dissections, uh, different objects, HTTP, whatever you want to do, you can al always export that information. So it's a very, very useful tool. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have specific questions about Wireshark, let me know in the comments section below here on YouTube or on AnsonAlex.com and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Again, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more technology tips and tutorials. That's all I have for you for today. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.